Outside this Bank of Montreal branch, reaction ranged from concern to anger. I'm, I'm worried. I work hard for my money, bro. That's it. I don't want to hear no sorry, no loss, no. Both BMO and Simply Financial say they found out about the hack on Sunday. In a statement, Simply said, we're taking this claim seriously and have taken action to further enhance our monitoring and security procedures. Simply wouldn't say who made the claim, but Bank of Montreal did. BMO told CBC News the hackers themselves alerted the bank and a threat was made to make the breach public. Security experts say it was likely an extortion attempt. They had access to a certain amount of data. Uh, it probably showed proof that they had this data. And, you know, uh, most likely were trying to blackmail the banks, saying, you know, we're going to release this uh, or else. Neither bank will say how the breach occurred. But cybercrime is a growing issue for financial institutions. Almost 70% of Canadians bank primarily online or through their mobile device. A recent report says technological innovations are increasing the amount of data at risk. Outsourcing can provide even more opportunity to cyber criminals. Every organization uses vendors and service providers to do some of their business, right? So every single system in the world has vulnerabilities. Some Simply Financial customers say fraudulent e-transfers were being sent from their accounts days before the bank said it learned of a security breach. I want to know, you know, where else I have to be uh, uh, concerned, right? Like, do I now need to be running credit checks to see if someone's trying to get a credit card in my name? And that's the problem, because while banks say they'll compensate anyone who loses money because of this, once your date of birth, your home address, and other personal information is stolen, well, experts say there's really no way to fix that. Aaron Saltzman, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, so we've decided to bring Aaron back in here because there's a late development on this story. What's happened? Well, what's happened is we appear to have heard from the hackers themselves. So uh, late today, late tonight, an email was sent to a number of news organizations, including the CBC, purportedly from the hackers. It contains what appears to be a message that the hackers originally sent to BMO and Simply Financial. Now, I should say before we go on that... We normally wouldn't broadcast threats. We take this type of thing very seriously. We wouldn't broadcast a bomb threat or any sort of thing like that. But in this case, we decided that the information is so much in the public interest. There are so many people out there who may be affected that we decided to go with this information. And what it tells us is that the hackers managed to get, it tells, explains how they managed to get through the bank's security apparatus to obtain the information. But more tellingly, it contains the demand for money. It says, if you don't pay us a million dollars in cryptocurrency, then we are going to release all of these names. And the banks clearly didn't do that and went public instead. So this email to the media also explains what the hackers are going to do. And if that stuff gets out, obviously that's a serious concern. Now, even more chillingly in here, there are several examples of some of the accounts that could be listed with real people, real names, real sins, real bank balances, even their security questions. And CBC's Go Public contacted one of the people on this list, and she told us that those, that information was all entirely accurate. So that's the reason why we're going with this now, because it appears that we have new information about this entire situation. Okay, Aaron, thanks. I know you'll be staying on this. You bet. All right. So CIBC owns Simply Bank, but the issue seems to be confined to just Simply. Other CIBC customers aren't affected. We reached out to three other major banks, Royal Bank, TD and Scotia. All of them say there's no indication their customers have been affected either. It is still unclear how serious this breach was, but of course any breach of a bank's defences triggers alarm. And worldwide, this happens more than you might think. Banks might have good cybersecurity, but they are also pretty tempting targets. In 2016, hackers pulled off a staggering heist of Bangladesh's central bank, routing $100 million worth of funds from New York to a bank in the Philippines. Last month, three Mexican banks detected breaches of their electronic payment systems. No podemos decir que ya haya terminado. In that case, criminals siphoned nearly $20 million worth of pesos just redirected somewhere else because there was a flaw in the, one of the software uh, that authorized the trans bank transfers and uh, some people were able to get in and make that transfer possible. 
Canadian banks haven't had a cyber heist like that, but they have been offering services like online and mobile banking that have added vulnerability to the system. The convenience just masks some basic risks. Where do you connect with your smartphone? If you're going to an internet cafe and your Wi-Fi is activated, as an example, uh, what's, what, what are you connecting to? You have to assume that everything is a threat. And of course, the dark web is brimming with stolen credit card and personal data from past hacks. The advice from cybersecurity experts is as constant as the threat. Securing your, uh, your passcode, making sure it's not something simple to uh, guess from wherever um, social media presence you have. And afterwards, the securing your physical platform by not using necessarily that computer that lies in the um, hotel lobby or an internet cafe. In short, don't rely on companies alone, not even banks to protect you.